Welcome to my home. Thank you for joining us tonight. Let's start out with a word of prayer. Father God, I'm so thankful for today and for the word that you have for us today. I ask that you give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive everything that you want to speak to us through this message. We just love you and thank you and bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, the title of our message today is called Decisions, Decisions, Decisions. And we all face decisions every day of our life. There's many choices that we have to make um, for simple, everyday things such as uh, what am I going to have for lunch? Um, what do I wear today? Do I need an umbrella? Is it going to be hot? Is it going to be cold? Um, you know, do I need to go on the interstate today? Will traffic be backed up or do I need to take the highway and the side roads? Um, there are so many decisions that each of us have to make. Some of them are made in our homes with our families, and some of them may even be made on our employment or on our jobs. But a lot of these decisions are going to be decisions that will have temporary consequences. You know, if you uh, go on the interstate, you decide to go on the interstate and traffic's backed up, well, you know, you're just going to sit for a while, but it's not the end of the world. You'll be okay. And, you know, if it happens to rain and you didn't take your umbrella, you know, you may get wet, but you'll survive that. Um, and, you know, if you lay something out for supper and decide you want to have something else, there's there's not any real uh, damage or harm done. And, and those are just temporary. They have temporary consequences. So they don't make a difference in the larger picture of life. Amen. But then we have things that are that have stronger and deeper consequences in our life. Uh, who do I marry? Um, do I move out of state? Do I um, follow uh, what this person is saying versus what that person is saying? Do I follow? the Lord? Or do I do what's going to be most beneficial financially for my life? Every decision we make has consequences, some good, some bad. But the thing is, God wants us to know that he is there for every decision that we make, that there is nothing too small or too large that we can't go to him. He wants us to come to him. Uh, when I was meditating on this word, I just kept feeling like there are people who seek um, the opinions of others in order to make their decisions. You know, it could be somebody who's known you, a family member, a friend, a neighbor who's known you a long time. It could even be somebody that you've just met that you feel like um, they had experience that um, in, in the area that you're having to make a decision in and you, um, you feel like maybe they could lead you in the right way. Well, the Lord says that only one who knows you the best will be able to look at your life and the circumstances that you are in in order to help you make a decision that's going to take you someplace. You know, your father and mother knew you since the time you were born. Your mother felt your presence in her womb, but she hadn't met you yet until you were born. But there's one who has known you far longer than that. And because he has known you, 
He knows everything about you. He knows where your path lies. He knows what your destiny is. He knows where each step is going to take you and each decision. Some decisions will take you close to a, relation, a closer relationship with him, and some decisions may take you further away from him. But let's start out with some scripture that talks about how much God loves you, how much he thinks about you, and that he knows more about you than anyone will ever know. The first verse I want to take you to is in Jeremiah 1.5, and I'm reading this out of the Amplified Version tonight. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I separated and set you apart, consecrating you, and I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. God said, I knew you while you were in the womb, and I have already made plans for your life. You have a destiny that I have prepared, and I have placed inside of you. But in between the time that you will walk out that destiny, destiny and right now, he wants to give you every step in between so that you will grow in knowledge and wisdom and in sensing the presence of the Lord and his leading in your life. Psalm 139, verses 4 through 12. For there is not a word in my tongue still unuttered, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You have beset me and shut me in behind and before, and you have laid your hand upon me. Your infinite knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high above me, I can't reach it. Where could I go from your spirit? Where could I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, the place of the dead, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning or dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall your hand lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the night shall be the only light about me. Even the darkness hides nothing from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. Psalm 139, verses 13 through 18. For you did form my inward parts. You did knit me together in my mother's womb. I will confess and praise you, for you are fearful and wonderful and for the awful wonder of my birth. Wonderful are your words, works, and that my inner self knows them quite well. My frame was not hidden from you when it was being formed in the secret and intricately and curiously wrought as if embroidered with various colors in the depths of the earth which is a region of darkness and mystery. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book all the days of my life were written before they ever took shape. When as yet there is none of them. How precious and weighty are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. If I could count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awoke, could I count to the end? I would still be with you. 
we see from these verses that God knew us from the beginning as you know when we were being formed and that he made a wonderful plan for our life a plan that would bring us fulfillment joy peace you may say well I'm not living that kind of life now I I you know something happened or or maybe God didn't plan for me or I was a mistake God says that is a lie from these verses we just read you see that you were lovingly knit together in your mother's womb that his thoughts of you are forever and ever and ever he's always thinking about you there is no end to his love and compassion for you that he wants the very best for your life even though you don't know what that looks like or or what it'll even be i i feel like tonight that there are some who have lost hope in the plans of God for their life. They think they're so far away that um, they will never be able to get back on that path and they're just lost and, and they'll just survive through the rest of their life and you know whatever happens happens. But God says it's never too late. All you have to do is call out to him. Regardless of mistakes and decisions that you have made, maybe even decisions that others have made for you, it doesn't matter. God is a redeemer and he is a restorer. And if you call out to him and you come to him and submit yourself, tell him that you want relationship with him that you come in agreement with his plans for your life that you surrender yourself to him then he will take you and he will put the pieces back together and he will firmly put you right back on the path that he has created for you is the word said your days were all written in his book before any ever came to be he knows you intimately. He knows the plan for your life. He knows everything about you. The times you will fail, the times you'll disappoint him, the times you'll turn away from him. But he rejoices because he knows that you will come back, that you will return to him and allow him to have part, a part in your life, the major part in your life the part of leading and directing you. Amen. Um, I want to go to John 16, verse 13. But when he, the spirit of truth, the truth giving spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth, the whole and full truth. For he will not speak his own message on his own authority but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. He will give the message that has been given to him. And he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come and that will happen in the future. Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of God that was sent to dwell within each believer on this earth, brings us the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God allows us to make decisions for every area of our life that's going to be beneficial, that's going to be a blessing, that's going to strengthen us and encourage us. Amen? God knows what we need better than we do. He knows the consequences of the decisions that we're going to make because he knows our future. Remember, every word of our life was recorded in his book. So he knows what we're going to have to walk through, and he knows what our future holds. There's no person on the face of the earth 
that can give you that kind of wisdom to make decisions. Only God. And he provided that for us because he wants us to have an overcoming life. He doesn't want us to dwell in a place where the enemy just beats us up day by day by day, you know, coming back and reminding us of our failures and the bad choices and decisions that we have made. God wants us to rise above that. He says, I cleansed you of those bad decisions, of the, the sin and everything that's come about because of them. And I am taking you higher I am taking you to a level where you are able to walk in my grace and in my fullness with everything I have for you. Remember when Jesus was on the earth, he said that he told people as he ministered and told the disciples that he only did what he saw God do and he only said what he heard God say. Well, it's the same thing available for us today as we tap into Holy Spirit and allow him and what he has for us from our Heavenly Father. We are going to be able to walk an overcoming, victorious life. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11 and 12. And I love these two verses. They are verses that that you should have marked in your Bible, and you should read those, you know, frequently throughout our life because there are times when we may feel lost or troubled or mixed up or conflicted, but God knows. Amen. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Then you will call to me, and you will come and pray to me, and I will hear and heed you. Then you will seek me, inquire for, or require me as a vital necessity, and find me when you search for me with all your heart. That is the key there. We need to search for him with all of our heart. When we awaken in the morning, it's by the grace of God that we have life. It is his love for us, his relationship with us, that he wakes us up every morning. And so when we wake up, we need to thank him for that life. And we need to ask him what he would have for us that day. What plans do you have for me today, Father? What would you like for me to do? What can I do to be a blessing to you? You know, a lot of times we don't think about what blesses God. We think about God blessing us. But there are things that bless God. And when it comes from our heart automatically, because of the relationship we share with him and the love that he has given us that we give back to him, we act out of a heart full of that love. And when we do things from that heart of love, it blesses God. It strengthens us because we know that we have blessed God. And so we want to look to him. You know, he knows our plans. The scripture is so clear. He knows everything about us and he loves us deeply. He loves us when we fail him. He loves us even though we may completely turn away from him and make our own decisions. It doesn't stop the way he feels about us. But he longs for us to look to him first for every decision that we make. Amen. The last verse I have for you is Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. Search me thoroughly, O God, 
and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there's any wicked or hurtful way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. You know, God knows everything about us. Every word that's going to come out of our mouth. Every action that we're going to take. But if we ask him, if we stand before him and ask him to show us something in our life that he wants to uh, to deal with or to give us strength to help us through, then we are partnering with him. We are allowing him to work in and through our life with us. You know, forgiveness can only come through the strength of God. When we allow God to lead us in repentance and forgiveness, then we're going to be free from that area in our life. You know, God may bring someone before us, uh, their face or their name or, or a situation or something that reminds us of a hurt or a pain in our past. And, and if he does that, it's because it's the time for us to deal with it. He's there with his strength and his power and, and his love and his grace and mercy. And he is going to help us go through that. It's for our benefit that he does that. You know, the enemy will bring it back before you with, um, condemnation and, um, you know, words that you're never going to get rid of it or never going to be able to forgive or forget it. But you know, that's not what God says. God says that through him, all things are possible. As we free ourselves from and our lives from things in our past, and we stop the enemy from putting stop, putting stop signs or or turnarounds or whatever in our life, then we're going to walk free from a lot of bondage. When we uh, are in the Lord and we walk in his word, we daily go through things. And each day we will have something that we will walk through. But if we make good choices based on wisdom from God, then we're going to be able to leave those things behind and to walk free and to live an overcoming victorious life that the Lord has for each one of us. Amen. I just want you to know that you are deeply loved. And because he loves you so much, he wants you to come to him with every decision that you have to make today every decision. There is nothing that is so unimportant that he doesn't care about it. And there's no decision too large that he will not give you wisdom and help you through it and be with you as you go through it. You know, sometimes we wish things could be over as quickly as how we got into it. But we know that sin will carry us into a place. And because it sets up blockages in us and in our hearts and our souls and in our minds, those things have to be torn down. And sometimes grace is all that we can hold on to as we're going through tearing those things down. But God is going to help you, and he is going to give you wisdom and understanding and give you peace as you go through just making your life the very best that God wants you to. Amen. Father God, I thank you for this time together. I'm so thankful that your love is so deep and pure, and your thoughts are ever on us. You love us with a love that we can't even understand, a love that knows we're going to do wrong, but it doesn't change the way you feel about us, that you 
want us to come to you with every decision that we have to make so that you can lead us in a way that we will walk in victory for every area of our life. We just thank you and we bless you for everything that you're doing. We thank you, Father, that you are giving us ears to hear you clearly and distinctly, that as Holy Spirit speaks or puts upon our heart what we are to do, then we will be obedient to those things that you share with us so that we can walk closer to you. We just thank you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching tonight. I am, it's just such a awesome thing for us to know that he cares so much for us, that he has provided so much for us and his word is so rich in giving us the truth and giving us a foundation of the things that he has for us. I want to tell you again that you are not a mistake that you are deeply loved and valued by God, that it doesn't matter where your path is taking you, what decisions have led you to where you're at today. He wants to restore you and redeem you. Just reach out to him today and surrender to his love. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And I look forward to being with you again. Good night.